a large part of my clinical practice is actually treating patients with sleep apnea who are, are unable to get uh, success or uh, symptom relief with traditional treatments for sleep apnea, such as CPAP. Not all snoring is considered sleep apnea, and not all patients with sleep apnea snore. They oftentimes run together so that, you know, generally people who do snore have, uh, can have uh, sleep apnea, but it's, it's not always the case. Uh, the main symptoms of obstructive sleep apnea typically are uh, witnessed apneas at night. For example, a bed partner might say that uh, the patient stops breathing at night, which is obviously a, 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 big, uh, a big factor. Uh, daytime fatigue, uh, low energy, uh, feeling like you, you, know, you haven't had restful, regenerative, restorative sleep at night uh, are some of the main ones. Uh, but uh, the, the actual symptomatology or the, um, the presentation of sleep apnea can, can vary wide, widely. For patients who think they may suffer from sleep apnea, uh, absolutely the first place to start is what's called a sleep study. Uh, a sleep study generally now is done at home uh, where uh, the device is, is lent out to the patient for a night, they sleep in their bed, and they bring it back the next day. Uh, that result is interpreted and can provide a diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea. That test can be ordered by their primary care provider or their um, neurology sleep doctor, um, oftentimes pulmonologist as well, will order a host of sleep studies, but, uh, but really the initial workup of obstructive sleep apnea starts with a sleep study. There's been a renaissance uh, in how we think about sleep apnea from a surgical standpoint. For the last, I don't know, 50 or more years, typically the initial treatment is CPAP, and that remains the first-line therapy. Uh, but for a host of reasons, Patients just do not do well with CPAP uh, or the mask, or you know, also known as positive pressure therapy. Uh, that can be claustrophobia, that can be just their restless sleepers, they turn it off, that can be because they travel all the time and they can't bring their CPAP with them. Uh, there's a, a whole uh, list of reasons why people don't do well with, with CPAP. And prior to, I would say, the last five or 10 years, there really wasn't a whole lot we could offer them. Traditionally, uh, palate surgery was offered. That's uh, also known as a UP3 or a uvulopalatal pharyngoplasty. And what, what that involves is kind of reshaping the palate. Uh, I, you know, I still perform that occasionally, but uh, the issue was not that it was not a successful surgery or it was not a good surgery. It's that uh, we didn't know kind of the mechanisms of why obstructive sleep apnea happens. So, you know, taking a few steps back, obstructive sleep apnea just basically means your throat closes up when you sleep. Now, that can be uh, because the palate is falling back, that can be the, because the tongue is falling back, that can be because further down is falling back. Additionally, you can have patterns where the throat closes up from the sides, front to back, and really, uh, this has all been you know, recently discovered in the last five or 10 years. Before, we thought it was one size fits all. Now we know that there's probably 15, 20, or even more different patterns of obstructive sleep apnea. And so you can imagine that if, you, uh, if your problem is your tongue falling back, but you do a surgery on the palate, it's not gonna help because you're not addressing the source of the problem. In, in, you, know, you have to find what the individual cause is for each individual patient. And that's where uh, I think that there's a lot we can offer patients with obstructive sleep apnea. And so you know, the change has been not only appreciating these, that these exist, but how we assess in each individual patient what type of pattern they have. And so we can't just look at the patient in the clinic and say, oh, you have, you know, X, Y, Z pattern. We actually have to reproduce a night of sleep. And we do that through what's called a drug-induced sleep endoscopy or in a sleep airway exam. And what that involves is similar to a colonoscopy where we uh, give you a little sedation in the vein. Uh, we put you to sleep where you're breathing on your own, but just trying to, you know, medically simulate a night of sleep. And then I have a small camera that I put in the nose and I just look for about five minutes and just observe what's going on in the throat. Is it the tongue problem? Is it further down? Is it from the sides? Is it front to back? Then we wake you up. There's you know, very little recovery needed uh, because you know, we didn't really do anything. It was just a, a, like an observational procedure. Uh, but after that, we know your problem is the tongue. You know, we've got to get the tongue out of the way when you sleep or the palate, we've got to get the palate out of the way. And that really drives what therapy or what procedure uh, is provided to each individual patient. If we can do that, we can get over 90% success by, uh, by 
you know, tailoring a treatment program for each individual patient. Now, before, again, assessing, we weren't able to really assess what problem people had, but now that we're able to assess, we, the other development has been we now have a treatment for each individual pattern. And so one of the most well-known or kind of, I guess, probably more talked about uh, advances has been called the Inspire uh, device or hypoglossal nerve stimulator. Uh, that's been FDA approved since 2014. And what that does is it's, it's actually a pacemaker for the tongue. So we're able to, uh, in a short procedure, it takes about an hour and a half, able to um, basically um, insert this pacemaker, which the patient uses at night. During the day, uh, it's totally off. They don't feel it. They don't know that it's there. At night, they turn it on, and this pacemaker actually will move the tongue forward, stiffen the palate, kind of open uh, the throat, uh, synced to their breathing. So every time they take a breath, the tongue goes forward, the palate stiffens uh, when they take a breath in, and then when they take a breath out, the tongue relaxes. Then in the morning, you, you basically turn it on, and then uh, you go about your day. Uh, that has, has really helped um, a tremendous amount of people uh, because it does actually use the body's own kind of wiring, its own muscles to stiffen and open the throat, uh, which as, you know, as, I, as I mentioned, is fundamentally the problem with sleep apnea. Now, the people who qualify for that are uh, people with moderate to severe sleep apnea. Uh, there is a weight cutoff, so you have to have uh, typically a BMI under 35, but that can vary by insurance. Uh, you, and then as well, you have to undergo this sleep study, this uh, a sleep airway exam that I perform to, to assess that, yes, it truly is a tongue problem and not something else. Uh, but other uh, advances as well include what's called a hyoid suspension or an airlift procedure. Uh, this is really indicated for people who have uh, collapse you know, much further down in the throat. So uh, if the problem isn't the tongue, but further down, we're able to suspend that forward. Uh, that's uh, about a 30 minute procedure, also an outpatient procedure uh, that um, uh, basically provides more space in there, uh, well tolerated, and again, in the appropriately selected individual can be uh, can really be a game changer. Uh, and lastly, if the problem is the palate, uh, as I mentioned also, uh, the UP3 or the uvulo palatopharyngoplasty has been around for, for uh, several decades, but we've actually tweaked the procedure to provide a slight kind of uh, reconfiguration of the palate, uh, which uh, again, if I see that on the sleep airway exam that the problem is the palate, we can do that with a lot of success. So. Uh, just kind of in summary, we've we've been able to now understand that there are different nuances in obstructive sleep apnea, as you know, in terms of the cause, and then now we're able to assess that and then uh, provide a tailored approach uh, to treating depending on what level of obstruction the patient has. The vast majority of of sleep apnea procedures that we perform are are, are performed on an outpatient basis. Uh, it really just depends actually on a patient's other kind of medical problems that they may have. Uh, sometimes if a patient has a lot of heart or lung issues, we may keep them overnight. But I would say 90 to 95% of the cases I do for these types of procedures, both the Inspire, the airlift hyoid suspension, as well as the UP3 do go home the same day. The recovery uh, you know, varies from person to person, but uh, generally about you know, maybe two to five days off of work, depending on, uh, on the individual patient, and uh, uh, generally are, are, are very well tolerated. To assess if someone you know, would like to proceed with any of these procedures or would be a good candidate for one of these procedures, uh, it really starts with the sleep study. The sleep study, depending on the severity, well, one, if, you, if the patient has sleep apnea or not, but then two, depending on the severity. Typically, these, um, these procedures are, are really uh, reserved for those patients who have moderate or severe sleep apnea. Uh, mild sleep apnea, uh, we have a few other options uh, that don't involve you know, a surgery. Uh, but again, uh, typically anyone who's been diagnosed with, with uh, sleep apnea does need to try a CPAP or a mask first in some capacity just because that is really the first line therapy. Uh, and you know, if you can have success with that, obviously it saves a procedure and uh, you know, obviously people do have success with that. Where I come in is really where the patient struggles with CPAP and uh, instead of just saying, you know, I can't use a CPAP, therefore there's nothing for me we kind of come in and say there actually are some new things available for the, for the patients who just, just can't do well with the traditional therapy.